Hey, today I'm going to show you how you can create this simplified Oni Katana in Blender from scratch. I'm going to show you some tips and tricks that I use myself and learn you some basic things in Blender. And thank you all so much for the insane support. We are 20k now. So I thought it was time to take a look behind the curtain and show you how you can start learning Blender yourself. And don't worry, a new variant concept will come out next week. First off, download the latest version of Blender. I'm using Blender 3.0 at the moment. The download link is below. After you downloaded Blender, open it. You are now looking at the viewport. The controls in the viewport are pretty simple. Scroll zooms in and out. If you press down the scroll wheel, you can rotate around. And if you want to pan around, just press shift and then put the scroll wheel down. And then there's also the numpad. One, gets you in front view, seven gets you in top view, and three gets you in side view. And if something is unclear, there's always the keys that are pressed here on the left hand side. To get ready to start, select everything by pressing A, and then press X to delete everything. Now we can start from a blank slate. The first thing that I always do is to add my reference image. I left mine in the description below, but you can also create your own. To put it into Blender, first go into front view by pressing numpad 1 and then drag it in. To center the image, press Alt plus G and to scale it up a little bit, just press S and pull the mouse up. Just like this. Before we can start modeling, you have to know this. In Blender, you have two very important modes. It's the object mode and it's the edit mode. You switch between them by pressing tab while selecting an object. In edit mode, you edit the geometry of only the selected model, and in object mode, you generally move every model around. Now, let's get started. So, if you now want to add a plane with Shift plus A, like this, we are still in object mode, and we can't see the plane because it's flipped. To rotate the plane, first go into edit mode by pressing Tab, and then press R for rotate. Here, you type X because we want to rotate on the X axis and then type 90 because we want to rotate 90 degrees on the X axis. Now you can see the plane. You are already in vertex selection right here. So now you can start moving the points from the plane to the blade. You do this by selecting a point and then press G to move it. Don't forget to zoom in. And to see the reference image in the background a lot better, switch the viewport shading to wireframe right here. Now move all of the points to the blade. If you're done, it should look something like this. And before I forget, don't forget to save your project once in a while. Step 3. Tracing. Go into Edge Select right here and select an edge. Extrude the edge by pressing E and move it along the blade right here and also on the other side. Like this. Here at the end you can move this vertice to make it a sharp. Now you can go out of edit mode and change the viewport shading again. You have now traced out the entire blade. Do the exact same thing with the handle. Just at the plane, go into edit mode, press R, press X, press 90, and then start moving the vertices to the handle. And don't forget to enable wireframe mode. You have now traced out the basic shape of the katana. Step four, let's make it 3D. First, select a reference image and press H to hide it. You can enable it right here again if you want. Then, rotate the viewport a little bit and select the blade. Go into edit mode, press A to select everything and then move the blade a little bit this way. Then, go into the modifier tab right here and add the mirror modifier. For the axis that you want to mirror, press Y and deselect X and also enable clipping. Now press E to extrude and move it inwards so the faces collide here. Before you deselect anything, press X and delete the faces in the inside because later they're going to mess up the entire model if you don't delete them. Do the exact same thing with the handle by going into edit mode, selecting everything, moving it out a little bit, adding the mirror modifier, selecting Y, and enable clipping and then extruding it 
and don't forget to delete the face in the center. Now you have blocked out the basic shape of the katana. Step 5. Let's refine the blade. First go into front view and re-enable the background image and go into wireframe mode. Then select the blade. Go into edit mode and add in a loop cut. You can add in a loop cut by pressing here or by pressing Ctrl plus R. And then you click on the mesh and you can drag it up to the place where you want the sharp part of the blade to start. If you're done, just click again. And now you have added a loop cut. Go out of edit mode, go back to the solid view and hide the background image again. Then rotate it up a little bit, select it, go into edit mode and select everything by pressing A. Now you can drag the blade inwards with the green arrow to make it a lot thinner. To make the sharp edge at the bottom, you could select every line once by pressing shift or you can press alt and then click to select every line at once. Drag it in a little bit with the green arrow like this. So you now have a sharper edge at the bottom. Step six, let's handle it. Let's move back to the handle. For now, it was just a cube. And to change that, go into edit mode and add in a loop cut like this. You want to pull the loop cut a little bit out, but you can't see the arrows. So click on this tool right here and push it out a little bit. Go out of edit mode and you can see it's not that smooth. To make it smooth, go into the modifier panel and add in the subdivision surface modifier. Pull both values up to three, but you now you can see the handle is completely messed up. To change that, go into edit mode and add in two loop cuts, one at the end and one at the beginning, like this. To make it even better, right click and shade smooth, like this. Step seven. Now let's add the ropes. Start off by adding a curve and here select circle. Now go into this tab right here and open up geometry. Here, pull the depth up to give the circle some thickness, like this. Now go back in the front view, re-enable the background image and go into the wireframe mode. Now with the commands that we learned before, with G move it over and with R rotate it so it fits the reference. You can also scale it down a little bit like this. If you now go out of the wireframe mode, you can see it doesn't wrap around the handle. So to fix this, go into the modifier panel and add in a shrink wrap modifier. Here with the eyedropper tool, select the handle as a target, but now the rope is completely messed up. To fix this, go right here and apply the modifier. Go back into front view and go back into the wireframe mode. Now you can fix the circle by rotating a bit and then copying it over by pressing shift plus D. Like this. Do the exact same thing with the rest of the ropes. Shift D, then rotate it like this and shift D again. Go back in solid view and hide the background image. Now we have something that looks like this. To fix a lot of these issues right here, you can go into edit mode and select the upper part and move it closer to the handle like this. Now to finish the handle, you can drag this part right here with point select out to make the end a bit smoother like this. And then let's move to step eight, the hand card. You need to add in a new plane and re-enable the background image like this. Go into wireframe mode and now you rotate it like the ropes before and move it to the point where you want it. You can scale it down to fit it perfectly. Go back in solid view and hide the reference image. You have something like this. Now go into edit mode and add in a loop cut through the center like this. Go into the face select, first go into the move tool again and delete this face right here. X and then face. Add in the mirror modifier with the Y axis and enable clipping. Now add in another loop cut like this. Go into the vertex select and select the move tool again and move these two points inwards like this. Now you can add in a subdivision surface modifier. Again, put it up to three on both and also add in a solidify modifier. Here on the offset type zero and then give it some thickness. Now we have it like this. To make it smooth here, right click and shade smooth, but now everything is smooth. So go into this tab, open up normals and enable auto smooth. To make it a little bit better, add another modifier, the bevel modifier. Now you have this bevel around the edges. Step nine, let's add the Saya. 
I know, I can't speak. These are all steps that we learned before. So Shift A, add in a plane, go into edit mode, press R, X, 90 degrees, go into the point selection or the vertex selection and move the vertices close to the blade and the hand cut. Go in edge select and do the exact same thing as we did before with the blade. Extrude along the blade, like this. Then rotate a bit around, select everything and move it out. And now go into the modifier panel and add in the mirror modifier. Select the Y axis and enable clipping. Then extrude inwards like this and delete the faces. Now you have something like this. Go out of edit mode and add in a new modifier, the subdivision surface modifier. Put it up to three like with the handle. Go around here, hide the hand cut for a short moment. Go into edit mode, select the face selection and delete this face right here, like this. To make it sharp at the end, add in a loop cut and pull it up, like this. It's a little bit thin at the moment, so go into edit mode again, select everything, go into the move tool and pull it out a little bit, like this. Now you can also right click and shade smooth. As the last part, we enable the hand cut. Now we have something like this. Step 10, let's add in some textures. Change the viewport shading to material preview right here and let's start adding in the gold material. Select the hand cut, go into the material tab right here and create a new material. Let's call it gold. Change the color to something like this and to make it metallic, put this value up to one. Something like this looks good, I think. Now, you can also play with the roughness of the material right here and pull it down a little bit, so it's a lot shinier. Now, I also want a golden part at the end of the handle. So select the handle and then go into edit mode. Here, in the material tab, create two new materials. The last one you can select right here, the gold material. Go into the face select mode right here and select all of these faces right here. Then go over to the material preview, click on the gold and press assign. Now the back of the hand is gold, but we only want the gold here at the end. So go into edit mode again and add in a loop cut and move it up like this so the gold stays in its place. For the other material on the handle, create a new material and call it handle. And for the color, choose something dark like this. Here also play with the roughness of it. Now let's tackle the ropes. Select the first one and create another new material and call it rope. And then for the color, choose something red. Play with the roughness right here so it's not as shiny as before. Then select all of the ropes and at the end select the rope with the material. Press Ctrl plus L and link the materials. Now all of the ropes have the material. The next part is the most difficult part. First select the sire and go into edit mode. Here you also want the gold material at the front. So create two new materials and select the last one as gold and then press assign with the faces selected. For the sire, create a new material and call it sire. Go over to the shading tab right here and now we are in a completely different view. If you can't see the notes right here, you may have to enable use notes. So now let's bring in a texture for the sire. I have got mine right here and you also find it in the link below. So just drag it in to this field right here and then connect the color to the base color. You should now be able to see the texture really small right here. To fix this, go into this field, press Shift plus A and search Texture Coordinate Node, this one, and then also add in a mapping node, like this. Connect the UV to the vector right here and this vector connect to the image vector. With the sire still selected, go into Edit Mode with the sire, select everything and press U for UV unwrapping and click unwrap. Now you should have something like this. In the mapping node, you can change the location of the texture right here with these sliders and you can also change your rotation like this. And I think something like this works fine. Then go back to the layout tab and now for a short while, hide the sire. You can now select the blade and create the final material. The material for the blade is the exact same as the gold material. Just change the orange color to white. And there you go. Step 11, let's render it. It's pretty simple. In object mode, just press Shift A and add in a camera right here. 
Then you can rotate your viewport around the location where you want to render the image and then press Ctrl, Alt and Numpad 0. This snaps the camera to the view. Inside the camera, you can press G to move it. And if you press G and double tap Z, you can zoom out. You now can switch your mode to rendered view. The scene is pretty dark, so let's add in some lights. Add in a point light and change the power up to like 500. Change the radius also up. And then press 7 to go on top view and move the lights around. So after a while, I added in a bunch of lights right around here. And now to finally render our image, go up here to render and click render image or just press F12. Now you got a render. To save the render, go up here to image and save as. If you don't want to render the sire, select the sire, go up here where you can see it and deselect both icons. Now if you render, the sire isn't rendered. You can play around with the model a lot more. Just take a look at my Oni Katana. Here for example, I've added in more golden lines right here and made this thinner. But you can decide how you want to improve it from here or even create something completely different with this workflow that I showed you. Just replace the reference image at the start and create your own dreams. I hope you liked this longer, more educational video. Let me know in the comments below. And if you created the Oni Katana, send it to me on Twitter or Instagram. Like and subscribe.